Marshall D. Teach. I believe he will be the final enemy standing in front of Luffy. Do you know the name he was originally supposed to go by? It's written in Oda Sensei's early notes on Blackbeard. I believe this is the biggest hint about his future actions. At the end of this video, I will explain in detail his original name and its significance. It's now clear that Blackbeard's goal is to take over the world. What do you think he will do to achieve this? Simply put, I believe he will use the upcoming war that will engulf the world to become its ruler. People around the world have received Vegapunk's message. There are certain individuals and groups who will be the first to act upon hearing this message. A major hint lies in this scene. Why was Koza, a seemingly minor character in the grand scope of One Piece, depicted twice? Rebecca and Leo were also shown again. Dress Rosa and Alabasta share an important commonality. Can anyone think of what it is? It's that citizens in both countries fought against their royalty. In both cases, the Navy moved to support Luffy and his crew. What I want to convey is that this kind of structure will be reused in the final arc. Citizens will be dragged into the fight against the world government. Instead of following the justice proclaimed by the world government, the Marines who follow their own sense of justice will fight alongside Luffy. In this video, I will analyze how Blackbeard might get involved in this battle based on the information we have so far from the perspective of a Japanese translator. By the way, does anyone know when Pudding, who is captured by Blackbeard, has her birthday? It's actually the same as mine. The Great Battle truly began with the destruction of the Lelouchia Kingdom, which was featured in Chapter 1060. The event that likely prompted Vegapunk to decide to reveal the truth to the world was the annihilation of the Lelouchia Kingdom by the ancient weapon possessed by the world government. The shockwave from this event caused earthquakes worldwide, leading Vegapunk to foresee the world beginning to sink. The details of Lelouchia Kingdom's destruction were suppressed by the world government. So many citizens were unaware of the truth. This means that the revolutionary extremists around the world, upon hearing this truth, are expected to intensify their movements. Lulucia was one of the nations involved in the Eight Nation Revolution. Those who hear Vegapunk's broadcast and possess revolutionary intent are likely to harbor even greater resentment towards the world government and will start taking action to change the world. In addition, there's a system in the current One Piece world that supports this revolutionary extremist movement. The Cross Guild, which places bounties on Marines. For revolutionaries wanting to overthrow the world government, this system is highly beneficial, and many will likely start targeting the heads of the Navy. This not only reduces the Navy's strength, but also provides funds for the revolutionary movement. Some might even donate part of their earnings from hunting Marines to their respected Flame Emperor Sabo, especially since the Revolutionary Army's financial struggles have been highlighted multiple times. In Chapter 1082, Sengoku and Suru expressed their desire to dismantle the Cross Guild as soon as possible. They discussed this at Navy headquarters the day before the Egghead incident. But they are no longer at the headquarters. They are now on a warship, heading somewhere. Moreover, it's nighttime around Mariejoie, whereas it's daytime where their warship is. This suggests they might have already set off to the New World to take down the Cross Guild. While revolutionary extremists seem to target Navy personnel and kings of world government member nations, the revolutionary army is different. Dragon appears to be focusing on a confrontation with the Knights of God. The Knights of God are not like Cypher Paul or the Navy. They are a group of fighters among the Celestial Dragons. 
This indicates that the Revolutionary Army's consistent goal is to overthrow the Celestial Dragons. The symbols they destroyed belong to the Celestial Dragons, not the world government. The only concern for the Revolutionary Army is that Dragon, as shown by his anger over the false report that Sabo killed Cobra, likely disapproves of revolutionary movements that harm kings of world government member nations, except for the Celestial Dragons. In contrast, Sabo wants to spread the flames of revolution worldwide, which could become a crucial point in their relationship moving forward. In any case, it can broadly be expected that a structure of revolutionary army versus knights of God and revolutionary soldiers around the world versus navy and world government member nations will form, representing the conflict between the world government and revolutionaries. We have already read about a smaller scale version of this kind of conflict in One Piece. Yes, the war that took place in Alabasta, I believe this battle provides hints about the final conflict in One Piece, which was initially planned to end in five years. Typically, a manga would be cut short if it didn't gain popularity. However, One Piece gained popularity right from the start. This led to the prospect of a long-term series, and three years into the serialization, the term Shichibukai appeared. Oda Sensei has stated that the introduction of the Shichibukai was what allowed One Piece to become a long-term series. However, if we consider that One Piece was initially planned to end in five years, it seems plausible that Alabasta was intended to be the stage for the final battle. When the map of the One Piece world was created, Alabasta's location wasn't clearly defined. Moreover, Alabasta has many connections to facts revealed in the final saga. The fact that there were ruins of a once prosperous civilization beneath the Alubarna Palace hints at the existence of a world that once sank into the sea. Additionally, the city of Alubarna being built on a large circular plateau foreshadows the looming crisis of the world sinking into the sea. This is why the Alabasta Kingdom has been given renewed importance in the final saga. In fact, before starting the Egghead arc, Oda Sensei stated that from here on, the story truly becomes one piece. As Helmeppo predicted, the sunken world seems connected to the great treasure One Piece, further supporting the likelihood that Alabasta was planned to be the final battleground. Do you remember the structure of the war in Alabasta? Yes, it was a battle between the Royal Army and the Citizen Rebel Army. However, there was an organization secretly manipulating this conflict from behind the scenes. Baroque Works. Crocodile, the boss, was recognized as a hero in Alabasta, but his true objective was to obtain the ancient weapon hidden in Alabasta and take over the kingdom. This quote from Cobra clearly illustrates the structure of the battle. If our royal army clashes with the rebel army, the only one who will be laughing in the end is Crocodile. I think, just like Baroque works in the Alabasta arc, there's someone in the final saga who plans to seize everything amidst the conflict between the world government and the revolutionaries. This person will likely gain knowledge of the ancient weapons as well. I'm sure many of you have already thought of this person. Marshall D. Teach. <laughs> he always appears as a third party during conflicts, aiming to benefit from the chaos. In Impel Down, he appeared during the battle between Luffy's group of escapees and the guards, recruiting powerful allies. At Marineford, he showed up in the middle of the war between the Whitebeard Pirates and the Navy, seizing the Gura Gura no Mi and wreaking havoc on the Navy headquarters. Although the details are unclear, the same happened during the Rocky Port incident. It is believed that Law, Kobe, and Ochoku were central figures in the event, and Teach intervened, defeating Ochoku to become the boss of Pirate Island. 
At Amazon Lily, he intruded as a third force in the conflict between the Kuja pirates and the Marines. In the Egghead Incident, amidst the battle between the Emperor Straw Hat Luffy's crew and the world government that issued the Buster Call, two members of the Blackbeard Pirates appeared, and Devon gained the ability to transform into Saturn. Blackbeard is cunning and knows how to maneuver amidst warring factions. Therefore, he wouldn't deliberately make enemies of the widespread revolutionaries. To take over the world, he will likely exploit the ongoing conflict between the revolutionary extremists, the revolutionary army, and the world government. By the way, the title of this chapter in the Alabasta arc is Rebellion. The kanji used here typically reads as hanran, meaning rebellion. However, in this context, it's read as uneri, which translates to wave or surge, an important keyword in one piece. Inherited will. The wave of the age. The dreams of the people. Out of these, two have already been used as titles, but the wave of the age has not yet appeared. I believe this title will be used when the rebellion, led by the revolutionary army and the revolutionary extremists, spreads across the world. Let's first consider Blackbeard's strategy towards the revolutionary extremists. The cards Blackbeard holds will be crucial in this scenario. The revolutionary army's primary target is the celestial dragons, but the soldiers of the revolutionary extremists view the world government itself as the enemy that needs to be overthrown. They would be quite convenient for Blackbeard. Crocodile gained the trust of the Alabasta citizens and was celebrated as a hero by eliminating pirates entering the Grand Line. Similarly, Blackbeard has currently captured the Navy hero, Garp. In a world where even the Navy is a target, it wouldn't be surprising for Blackbeard, who has taken Garp hostage, to become seen as a true hero. In Alabasta, Baroque works intensified the conflict between the royal army and the rebels using Bentham's powers of the Mane Mane no Mi. Similarly, Blackbeard pirates have Devon, who can transform into the Five Elders. By using her ability to impersonate Saturn, they could further erode trust in the world government inflame the anger of the revolutionaries, and intensify the conflict. Now, let's look at Blackbeard Pirate's strategy towards the revolutionary army. The only significant forces that could pose a threat to Blackbeard are the Knights of God, the Five Elders, and Emu. Currently, the revolutionary army is disrupting the supply of goods to Marie Joie by destroying its food stores. Dragon anticipates that this will intensify the conflict with the Knights of God. When the battle between the Revolutionary Army and the Knights of God reaches its peak and both sides have weakened, Blackbeard will seize the opportunity to take control. But how does the Blackbeard pirates know about the Revolutionary Army's plans, which have been shrouded in mystery? The clue lies in the movements of the Blackbeard pirates after Dressrosa. While Blackbeard has strategically acquired what he desires, there are two mysterious actions he has taken. One is the attack on Drum Kingdom, which I discussed in another video. The other is the assault on the Revolutionary Army's headquarters, Baltigo. For Blackbeard, who wants to conquer the world, it wouldn't be wise to destroy the Revolutionary Army since they can help weaken the world government's forces. It's more efficient to let both sides exhaust themselves and then take everything. I don't believe he intended to destroy the Revolutionary Army solely to get revenge on Sabo for what he did to that muscle-headed Burgess. So why did he attack Baltigo? I believe it was to gather information about the Revolutionary Army. Given that Robin knew nothing about Dragon two years ago and that Baltigo was an unknown location, According to Burgess, it's clear that the Revolutionary Army is very good at keeping their information secret. I think Cypher Paul should take a lesson from them on how to handle classified information. 
This also applies to the five elders who hinted at Emu's existence to York. Blackbeard likely obtained valuable information about the Revolutionary Army's future plans during the raid on Baltigo, which no one else had managed to get. It's highly probable that the two giant captains who went to pick up Burgess and Dressrosa headed straight to Baltigo afterward. With Lafitte's ability to use hypnosis, they could have easily extracted confidential information. While it's unclear if Shu Yu had the power of the Suke Suke no Mi at that time, if he did, his ability would make infiltration and stealing secrets a breeze. This means that the Blackbeard pirates may have learned about Dragon's plan to summon the commanders. Consequently, it may not be a coincidence that Peachbeard, a subordinate of Blackbeard, was present in the Lulusia kingdom where the commanders gathered. Blackbeard probably wanted to assess the strength and abilities of the commanders, many of whom possess devil fruit powers he would covet. By leveraging the revolutionary army to weaken the marines, the world government, the knights of God, and other forces, the Blackbeard pirates are biding their time. In Chapter 1054, Sakazuki mentioned that they were running out of troops. Moreover, with the influence of Cross Guild, even pirates and civilians worldwide are targeting naval officers. For Blackbeard, the throne of the world's ruler, which even rocks couldn't achieve, is gradually coming within reach. Let's discuss what actions Blackbeard might take and what scenarios might unfold if he aims to conquer the world. Here are some thoughts from Dawn Dusk. If Blackbeard is serious about toppling the world government, his options are limited. What do you think he needs to do? It's to seize the top position of the world government. The crucial question is whether Blackbeard is aware of Imu's existence. Currently, the only ones who surely know about Imu are the five elders, Sabo, Wapole, and Imu's servant. Sakazuki has hinted that he suspects a higher power above the Five Elders, suggesting he might be aware of Emu. Doflamingo might also know. This means that without having been to Maria Joie, it's challenging even to become aware of Emu's existence. However, the Blackbeard pirates have someone who has infiltrated Maria Joie. That's everyone's favorite navigator. Michael Jackson. Given his flying ability, it makes sense that he could reach Maria Joie, which is atop the red line. Considering this, it's unlikely that Lafitte infiltrated Maria Joie just to recommend Blackbeard for the Shichibukai. It's possible that during his infiltration, he might have stumbled upon that secret room in Maria Joie. If this is the case, it could explain why the Blackbeard pirates simply left after finding Saturn possibly indicating that their true target is Emu's head. To dominate the world, Blackbeard might think it's more efficient to take over the existing authority of the world government rather than destroying and rebuilding it from scratch. In other words, Blackbeard might aim to replace Emu and take the seat on the empty throne. In that case, he might directly target Maria Joie to take Emu's head. As previously explained, if the world government's forces are preoccupied with suppressing the revolutionaries, the defenses at Maria Joie would be weakened. Even if that's not the case, the Blackbeard pirates are well-equipped for infiltration. First, there's Shuryu's Suke Suke no Mi. If his ability has awakened, he could potentially make the entire crew invisible. Then there's Lafitte's hypnosis ability. He once hypnotized a Marine to open the Gates of Justice at Marineford, so he could do the same at Mary Joie, hypnotizing guards to unlock rooms restricted to key personnel. And of course, there's Devon, who can transform into Saturn, making her an invaluable asset for this mission. However, there's someone who might appear at Mary Joie to thwart Blackbeard. That person is Shanks, Shanks has been closely monitoring Blackbeard's movements, and their rivalry has been simmering since the time of the Paramount War. No matter what, a clash between these two is inevitable.
I won't make any predictions about the outcome of this battle, but I do think he'll lose an eye during his fight with Shanks. As a result, this legendary pirate will be born. So, will Blackbeard ultimately seize the throne as the king of the world? I believe it is highly possible. The reason lies in his initial concept name, Everything D. Teach. This implies that he might be the one to obtain everything in this world. The scale of power of the enemies Luffy has faced has gradually increased over time. Crocodile nearly seized control of Alabasta. Doflamingo ruled Dressrosa for 10 years. Kaido dominated Wano for 20 years. Thus, the final enemy, Blackbeard, will not just be a local tyrant, but a global ruler standing in Luffy's way. At that moment, we will finally see Blackbeard as the pirate with an eye patch. Ultimately, it will be the combined forces of Luffy's Straw Hat Grand Fleet and Kobe's sword that will defeat him. The King of World, Blackbeard.